Hey guys, what is up? Swim here with the build that uh, I played a bit going into Big Boss level 3. It wasn't what I played as much as Warriors, which we did in the last guide, which I would credit uh, that build to, you know, helping me get to Big Boss 3. But this build certainly helped as well. And this is my Hunter's build, uh, which is not super, you know, innovative. There's a lot of people running Hunters in this way, but... What I would recommend is a build with Drow Ranger, Medusa, Mirana, Sniper, Tidehunter, Wind Ranger for six hunters with the Warriors Doom, Pudge, and Kunkka. Although Doom is a flex slot, something like a level 3 Tiny will often be a replacement for that Doom slot. Or even if you have Coordinated Assault, you could even use Troll Warlord to spread the Coordinated Assault attack speed aura to your Hunters, like the Drought Aura, giving them even more attack speed. Because you can run Coordinated Assault with even just one Troll, and it's totally fine. So you might notice something interesting here if you watched my other two videos, Assassins and Warriors. Uh, and there's going to be two more in the series. This is I've turned this into a five-part series. But... In the other two videos, I listed eight units as my composition, and then the ninth unit was like an add-on that was kind of optional if you get to that level. And that's kind of how Underlords ends up being. A lot of people try to design 10-unit compositions, and I'd highly recommend against that, because you often don't really get there, and you need to come online on level on round 21 when you hit level 8 before then. This is a 9-unit composition, and there's a couple of reasons for that. So the first of which is you really want the warrior frontline. The drow pairs really well with the pudge because you need to get that heartless online. Um, the kunkka is just generally really good. Kunkka being a warrior with like a big AOE stun, it's even picking up human, um, which is like, you know, not a, a useless buff at all, especially with how hunters wants to play. They're fast and they're bursty, so silences will do well for them if you can pair this with the other warrior, which you sometimes end up doing. Um, but basically the idea is because hunters are very expensive medusa is a tier 4 marana is a tier 4 and tidehunter is a tier 5 they're very rare and very expensive and even doom is also a tier 4 which you often want to go for this is a composition that actually benefits quite a bit from going to level 9 compared to the other two guides i've done warriors and assassins so far so think about going to level 9 a little bit more aggressively here your final board does want these nine units, these six hunters and three warriors, and you do very much want the increased probability of finding these rare units by being a high level when ruling. So if you are on hunters and you're having a good like win streak in the mid game and you feel like you can actually push your economy and just greed up to level nine before you really start rolling down on like rounds 21 to 25 or so, that is a fantastic position to be in and you will probably win the game if you play your cards right. Let's go ahead and go over items before we jump into positioning. You guys know the drill by now. So uh, you've got your Tier 1 items, as always, Chainmail is just the best, but Blightstone and Gloves are tied as close seconds, and these are going to be important to pick up with Hunters, um, because, of course, you know, you are a heavy DPS build, and you actually need to have designated tank units, usually Pudge and Kanka, and your, you know, your third flexible warrior, and you want designated offense units. Something like Gloves of Haste is going to do very well on a DPS unit, of which, you know, Medusa is your best option, uh, if this happens to be the best DPS uh, item you have at that point in the game, it's still better than nothing. Of course, Embarrassment is still better than all of those, but, you know, hey, what else is new? Okay, so next up, Tier 2. So Fall from Grace is going to do very well. This is just straight up one of the best items in general. You pick this, and you turn your third warrior, your fourth uh, flexible unit, into a human. In this case, probably Lycan instead of Doom, so that you can have the second Heartless pair, and you can go up to four Heartless, which is very, very powerful. As always, Smuggler is also insane. Unstoppable is surprisingly decent here. Even though you only run three warriors, it does get a bit of work done. But I would not take this over something like Mask of Madness, um, which being able to be applied to Drow Ranger is just a solid amount of value. I would say one of the things that's kind of important about like when you're thinking you should go Hunters early 
is basically how many drow rangers you have because hunters is a build that the late game of this build does very well if it gets a drow ranger level three so in the early game if i have like four drow rangers on like round six i might be thinking to myself okay this is gonna be a hunter's game right or if i have like five by round 11 or so I feel pretty locked in, even sometimes if I have like no other hunters, because you don't really want to be playing hunters in the early game. What I would recommend is supplementing your early game with like the warriors. Um, you don't really want to be collecting stuff like sniper or wind ranger early. You would rather kind of like get to interest point on 50, you know, win the early game with whatever like, you know, medium units you can, which are stuff like the warriors, maybe even like value units like druids. And then you want to buy the hunters after you're at, at like the 50 gold interest when you're entering uh, like rounds 16 through 20 is when you want to start collecting hunters and want to start thinking about pivoting your board. And of course you are going to be collecting Beastmaster as well because until you find Tidehunter uh, this is going to be a necessary fill in and sometimes Tidehunter comes late or doesn't even happen at all. So uh, back to items. Uh, we want Mask of Madness for our level 2 or level 3 drow. And as I mentioned before, Coordinated Assault is something I've been messing around with lately. I think this is pretty good if you use Troll Warlord as your third flexible slot. And you'll see how that positioning will look uh, in a little bit. For tier 3, obviously Hunter's Focus is a snap call. I would absolutely take this over basically anything on 6 Hunters. This is the item that partially defines the build. If I get this item on round 15 and I feel a little bit flexible I might try to take a hard curve into hunters as always Vanguard is really good skull basher super good retaliate very good relic actually happens to be about as good as skull basher in this build in particular just because this does very very well on Medusa but I still do favor skull basher over relic as an item even in this build but it's just closer than ever and then in tier 4 we've got Daedalus Moon Shard, uh, the typical DPS items. Oddly enough, Hunters don't really use Radiance as much. If I'm not going for something like a Pudge level 3, this is a build where I would prioritize Daedalus and Moon Shard over Radiance. But if my Pudge is looking like it's going to level 3, Radiance is still going to be taking the cake in this case if I don't have a better tank item to put on him. All right, so I've loaded up a test lobby so I can show you guys what the positioning is going to look like. We ended up with some fairly random items, but that's okay. So in this game, we happened to get a lot of tinies. So we're going to have tiny three as our flex slot warrior instead of something like a doom level two. Uh, that might have been a little bit more typical. Often you want your drow to be, you know, in the middle, spreading the aura to everything else. But it's important that if you have Beastmaster or Tidehunter in that slot, you will have one melee hunter. Right, which means that if you uh, want it to be able to attack things, it needs to be on the outside, of course, right? So something like this positioning is fairly standard. You do want to respect where your opponents are at. Uh, in this case, this opponent uh, has some assassins and most players are kind of in the middle. So what we can do in this case is step these guys a little bit forward, um, in particular the tiny. Let's go ahead and just have the tiny get main tank status he he's really beefy um and he's got this chain mail to kind of help him tank a little bit harder it'll allow him to get toss off early into a fight it's pretty debatable whether tiny or pudge is a better main tank um, just because you don't really want tiny dying that early let's actually have him coming in second here if we had a damage item putting it on medusa would be ideal uh, so you would want the damage item on medusa brooch of the aggressor wants to be on windrunner Gloves of Haste, in this case, is our best DPS item. Although, typically, Sniper is the uh, hunter that needs attack speed the most. Um, because, in this case, this is a test build and we don't have, like, a Sacred Relic or anything. We're going to do it like this instead. In a normal game, you'd pretty much always have, like, a Mask of Madness on Drow. Sacred Relic on something like Medusa. And that Sniper can pick up a Gloves of Haste or even a Moon Shard uh, if he gets lucky. Because he has very high damage and very low attack speed. So... Uh, at this point, we can just put Blightstone on someone in back Sniper. He usually lives very long in this case. And Octarine Essence on Kunkka is never bad because his boat goes down from 10 seconds to 5 on the cooldown, which is very powerful. Lastly, we can just go ahead and put Blade Mail on Tiny. I think in this case, I'd rather have Blade Mail be on my side tank than on my main tank. Main tank really does want like a Chain Mail or a Vanguard just to stay alive longer. And that's it. Let's go ahead and see how this positioning works out. 
So everything will go onto this pudge over here. All of my hunters are gathered around the drow level 3, picking up her 30% DPS aura in back, which is really good. Um, and as you can see, we're just kind of like melting people. Um, people are starting to kind of split later on into a fight. And we are pretty much good here. Now, depending on the situation, you might want to be cross-cornered against the opponent at any given time. Uh, it can be important to flip your board to the side. If you're against something like mages, for example, usually you want to be diagonally across from them. Something like knights, dragons, you want to be diagonally across from them. Uh, typically, you do not want to be directly, like vertically across from most compositions. Although in the hunter mirror, if you have the stronger board, being vertically across from them is going to do more than being diagonally across from them. Um, if you have something like a Troll Warlord to put in, you can do something like, for example, have the Troll Warlord in this um, empty spot right here uh, with the coordinated assault buff. So you're kind of double stacking auras here and you would lose the Flex Warrior in this case. And, you know, if you got the Troll Aura instead of like the tiny level three, you know, main tanking like that would be pretty good. So in as a 10th hero, I don't even mind adding in something like a Gyro to complete Deadeye, uh, if you can get Gyro to level 2. In general, in most of these builds, 10th uh, hero just wants to be whatever you can get to level 2 that actually has like some kind of like team fight presence, or maybe completes one of your perks, often something like Naga at that point in the game, but usually this build already gets it once it gets Tidehunter. All right, guys, uh, that's it. That's the Hunter's build that I've been playing and helping me come to Big Boss 3. Hopefully, this build will go on to help you guys out in your own climbing endeavors. Uh, maybe help me out a little bit on my climb to Big Boss 4 during my stream later today. At time of recording, even more hopefully, I'm already Big Boss 4 by the time you're watching this. But, uh... <laughs> Well, I guess I guess you guys will be able to be the judge of that at that point in time. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys next time in my video coming up, which is either going to be about knights or mages, probably, because those are kind of the last two comps I think are top tier that I haven't done in these videos yet.